Okay, so I'd like to introduce the first quick fire talker. This is uh, Dr. Michael Nichols, who is the co-founder and chief technology officer of LEO Labs. It is the first commercial data source for tracking satellites and mapping low Earth orbit. Uh, and he got his PhD in electrical, en electrical and computer engineering from Cornell University with a thesis on radar studies for the ionosphere. And I will make sure you have your clicker. And um, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Mike Nichols. I'm just talking to this. Um, however you want. You can take it or walk around, whichever you'd like. See if... Great. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to uh, tell you about Leo Labs today. Um, uh, as Ben said, I'm the uh, uh, CTO and one of the founders of Leo Labs. We started Leo Labs back in uh, 2016 to address the space debris problem in low Earth orbit, and more generally, to inform on the LEO environment and to serve the emerging LEO market. Um, we're doing that uh, by pursuing three strategic areas. One is we're deploying a global network of advanced, space, uh, advanced phased array radars that are gonna be used to track small debris through LEO. The second is we're building out a data platform where we take that, that data and offer data services and data analytics to our customers. And the third is connecting with a network of applications and uh, services developers to build upon our data platform to really build an ecosystem of applications based, of our, based on our data. So I'll tell you a little bit about all of those aspects as I go through the talk. Great. So a little bit about the opportunity we're pursuing. Uh, as we've heard throughout this conference, there are generational changes going on in LEO. Uh, Thousands, tens of thousands of new satellites being deployed, addressing new and diverse sets of markets. Uh, billions of dollars of new funding. Uh, a lot of this is fueled by the, by the availability, availability of launch. So the, the, the cost of launch coming down, the availability going up, allowing new technologies, riskier technologies to get into orbit faster. And most of this is happening on the commercial front, commercial sector. So we're providing a mapping platform for LEO uh, for what we do, uh, it's not sufficient to have a map of the present, a map of the past. We need a map of the past to, to look at, at events that happened. And more importantly, we need a map of the future. So uh, this is one visualization of the map we're developing. You can go to demo.leolabs.space right now and see the last uh, 12 hours of data that we're collecting on 10,000 plus objects through LEO. Uh, we're doing that with two radar sensors, one in uh, Alaska and one in Texas. Uh, this Texas radar we built uh, within six months of founding the company when we were a team of four people and started tracking objects uh, within six months of starting the company. Um, and then you can also see a, a representation simulation of the quarter million objects that we intend to be tracking within two years as we deploy our next generation radars that are, that's going to be tracking objects down to two centimeters in size, the most dangerous and uh, untracked debris in LEO. A little bit about the story of Leo Labs. We spun out of a, a large nonprofit research lab called SRI International. It used to be Stanford Research Institute in, uh, in, the, in the Menlo Park area in California. Uh, there, the, the team, the founding team, was working on phased array radars. So that's kind of our core specialty. Uh, we were building phased array radars for scientific applications, uh, for studying the atmosphere and ionosphere. This is a picture of, the, uh, of our radar in Alaska, the Poker Flat ISR. Um, so we learned how to build uh, large aperture, high power radars at good cost points and, um, uh, and that can operate in harsh environments with nobody on site. And really that's the technology that got us started at, at Leo Labs. Um, almost from day one, we've been serving customers, uh, customers interested in what's going on in the Leo environment. So I mentioned kind of this, uh, this key tenet is our platform. So we really view ourselves as a, as a data services play, uh, a, a, a data platform play, where we feed a proprietary data stream into our platform and build up data services based on that. Um, uh, from that platform, we deliver data and services to uh, commercial operators, to government regulatory space agencies, to government uh, SSA agencies, departments, departments of defense. Uh, and then finally, the insurance and risk management sector. And, and also a key part of, uh, of what we do is our platform developer development community. So uh, we have a, an open API where developers can come in and take our data at kind of any level and build up applications upon our data. 
So to go into a little bit more uh, depth on, on these three pillars that we're pursuing, so we have our radar network. Uh, we have two radars right now, uh, Pfizer, the Poker Flat Radar, and MSR, Midland Space Radar, Midland, Texas. And then we were building out four radars over the next two years uh, globally. Uh, that data feeds into our cloud-based platform. The real-time data comes in. We uh, automatically validate, calibrate, and provide, provide that data through our API. We also archive that data for uh, event auditing, look back in the, back in the past, that, that map of the past. Uh, and then we take that radar data and we, we build it into a variety of data services. And that's really where we're, where we're working the most, where we're hiring the most, and developing new applications. So one of the first thing we do is, is fit uh, orbits to our data. So we can then make a map of the future. We can predict where objects will be. With those predictions, we can offer a variety of services like conjunction avoidance, uh, like event detection, uh, anomaly detection in orbit. And there's a variety of other products and services we're working on. We offer all of this through a RESTful API interface and through a web-based interface. So depending on your comfort level or what your application is, you can connect to us in a variety of different ways. And then finally, that third pillar, our partners and customers. They range from government, uh, commercial, academic partners, building out a range of tools from analytics, visualizations, command and control systems, initial orbit determination, conjunction avoidance, and, and, and the list goes on. Uh, so you can go to uh, platform.leolabs.space right now. You can sign up for an account, and you can gain access to a limited set of our data, real-time data as it comes off the, uh, the radar on, on a limited set of objects. Um, really, we want to be very transparent about what we're doing. Uh, if, if a satellite operator or an SSA organization is going to trust us for what's going on in space, we need to be very transparent about, about the quality of our data and then how we derive products from our data. So we want to provide actionable data and data services for uh, satellite operators, for public sector space agency, risk, the, risk, the risk management industry. And all of this is leveraged uh, off of our proprietary data stream. <clears throat> So this is what you'll see if you go to uh, the, the platform page right now. Uh, this is a picture of the Midland Space Radar. Um, and this is kind of our unique radar architecture, one-dimensional phased array radars, a large aperture, high power, uh, illuminating uh, a large one-dimensional radar reflector. <clears throat> um, you can connect to our platform through uh, a web-based interface. So you can go there to our dashboards and download data, visualize the data, interact with it. You can write, com uh, download our command line application, open source, and, uh, and connect to the API that way. Or you can uh, build our RESTful API into your applications. Uh, and you know, ultimately, we want to be built into the operation systems for, uh, constellation, for, for constellations. So that's why we built this, uh, this RESTful API. Um, but also if you're developing applications or services where you need data on what's going on in LEO. <clears throat> We're really structured as a software as a service business. So we want to make sure to connect to our customers and our partners at the right level. We're not trying to sell a large enterprise software package. Uh, you can come to us and pick off the services or data that you need to drive your application or your need and connect to us in that way. So we're, we're targeting uh, products in three main sectors and, and, and uh, customers in, in four main sectors. So the three main uh, areas where we're developing uh, products are constellation management services, things like collision avoidance, uh, new launch, uh, doing initial orbit determination and object identification right after launch, uh, pa planning passes for uh, ground stations, uh, urgent care services, the orbit services, on the SSA side, space situational awareness side, uh, monitoring everything in space, regulatory compliance, uh, event auditing, what happened, automatic event detection. And finally, the risk management area is, is something we're pursuing. We, we want our data to be the actuarial data upon which products, uh, risk products are developed. Uh, so we see that as a big growth area for the company. And we're offering these products to, air, to uh, partners in the public sector, space agencies, regulatory agencies, departments of defense, commercial sector satellite operators, and applications and services developers, the risk management ind industry, and finally, uh, research and development. So on the academic side, we have an academic development program where we uh, give access to our data to academic institutions to feed the development of new algorithms. And ultimately, we want to see those algorithms commercialized and, and used to, to build out new applications, applications and services. Um, the data feeding, feeding all this, it's fueled by our global phased array radar network. So this is a map of, uh, 
of our two radars in red, the Poker Flat and, uh, and Midland, and then we're building out four new radars over the next a uh, couple years. These are notional sites only. This isn't saying where we're going with these radars. We're working on that right now. Um, but it's really important to us to deploy this global network. Uh, we gain redundancy in our system by, by this network effect. Uh, we're not trying to build monolithic radar sensors. We're driving, we're, we have very capable radar sensors and we're going to deploy a lot of them around the world. Uh, the observations from these sensors are really our currency from which we can derive these great data services and data products. Um, by 2020, we're going to be tracking roughly a quarter million objects, two centimeters and larger, up from, from the 13,000 today that are, that are known in LEO. Uh, we'll be able to diagnose incidents within four hours or less, and we'll have information globally from our sensors around the world. Uh, most importantly, uh, this uh, tracking of all this small debris will, uh, will unlock visibility to, to uh, the collision risk that's not mitigated today, which is roughly 95% of the collision risk. So that's Leo Labs. Uh, if you're interested, if you're developing applications or services or interested in the data, please engage with us through our website at platform.leolabs.space. Thank you.